They say you gotta lose a couple fights to win. It's hard to tell from where I'm sitting. They say that this is where the fun begins. I guess it's time that I was quit. Hey guys, this is Wes with Still Real Game Foul, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about breeding trick, breeding tricks, and breeding strategies. Uh, I've had a few people ask me in the past few days, uh, Wes, how do you pick which birds that you want to breed to each other? Uh, a few of those people, I actually told them uh, an old trick that a, an older cocker actually told me. Uh, he's an older breeder. Uh, he's been doing it for a long, long time. Uh, he said, remember pack. I said, well, what's that mean? He said, performance, attitude, and color. And I said, well, what's that have to do with anything? He said, performance. He said, when you're, when you're looking for a certain bird to breed, he said, you want to have the traits that you're looking for. You don't want to breed anything that don't have traits that you're looking for just to have something, just to have something to breed. You don't want a bunch of birds that you don't want. So he said, um, first off is performance. You're going to pick a bird with all the traits that you're wanting, or close to all the traits, half the traits or all the traits if you can. Then you're going to pick a hen with pretty, pretty much the same traits that you're also looking for, but the other half. Uh, I'm trying to dumb this down as much as I can uh, for some of the people that may just be getting into it. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can, so just kind of hang in there with me. Um, you take the traits that you're looking for. Uh, when you have a hen, all the stags that come off of that hen is going to take her traits. All the hens that come off of that stag is going to take the stag's traits. So, uh, sons take after mama, daughters take after daddy. So you want to take the two birds that you're that have the same traits, but you want them to be. You want to take a look at the hen's brother, and see if that's what the if that's the performance level that you're looking for, and ha and he has the traits because she'll carry that those type of traits too, and that's what the main that's what the stags are going to have mainly in them is the traits from the hen, so. I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next the next setup since we kind of went out we went over what your preferences are in the performance. So the second part is attitude. Nobody wants a chicken that is mean as the damn devil. Uh, I I personally I don't mind a mean chicken every now and then, but I don't want a yard full of mean chickens. Most of every bird on my yard is completely tame, sweet as can be, and you know they'll, you know they'll nestle right up next to you, whatever. Um, they'll they'll sit on top of your feet when you're walking. But um, the attitude is the trait that you can breed out once you have, once you have the stag, or you know the breed that you're looking for after you've already bred the first set and then you have what you're looking for, that's where you want to do your attitude adjustment. You want to, if you have a mean rooster, find out what blood caused that, or if it, or if it was the way you might have bred it, or the, way, or the way you raised it. That could have played a big part in it too. So what you want to do is you want to find out what caused that, or if you're wanting a mean, you know, it just depends. If you're wanting them nice, you have to figure out what made them mean. If you're wanting them mean, you got to figure out what made them nice. Uh, you isolate that blood, then breed back. Isolate it again, breed back, and then you'll have what you're looking for, whether it be mean or nice. Um, I actually bred some a couple a couple weeks ago. Um, I knew I knew how they were going to turn out. I had no doubt in my mind. I knew they were going to be the meanest meanest chickens I've ever raised, and so far, I mean they're just you know they're just little right now. But everything is pointing to I'm going to have my hands full with them. So I'm trying to get them gone as quick as I possibly can because I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> um, 
So anyway, then the next thing you want to deal with is color. Uh, a lot of people, I hear this, I say this, tons of people say it, but it's also completely untrue. It just depends on how good the breeder is. They say, color, pretty don't win. Simple as that. Pretty don't win. I beg to differ. It just depends on how the bloodline goes. It depends on what you've put into them, how much time and effort you've spent with them in order to get them with the certain traits that you want into that. Once you have that, you take what your what the color is that you're wanting, you breed into that, you breed back to it, and then breed back to your control cock, which would be your final product of the first setup, and then you're going to have the color. And once you get the color from that, that you're wanting out of a hen. All right, we had to cut the video for a minute. The dog started barking. Um, so when you have when you have the two when you get, when you breed those those two together, when you have the hen with the color that you're wanting, and you have the rooster of the final product that you're wanting, you breed those together, and when they the offspring that comes out of those, you're going to take the hen with the most traits of the mama, which you might have, you should have at least one in there. Out of a dozen, you should have at least one that kind of takes after, favors the mama more than the daddy. Uh, you breed that back to the daddy, and then once you get it from that, it'll, be, it'll become a recessive trait. So then you take that, breed back to the mama, of the original of the original color that you were after breed that stag back to the parent back to the mama and you're going to come out with a whole mess load of the color that you're wanting but they're not going to be they're not going to be exactly your final product of what you're after as far as the performance goes so you're going to take a stag from that and breed back to the hen that took at, took more after the mama than the daddy from the second, from the second breeding of the color, or from the first breeding of the color, and then when you come out, when you breed that back to them, you're going to have, you'll have all the colors that you're wanting. You'll have the main color, and then that's the way you want to do that. Uh, I think that's, I think that covered it. <laughs> so, uh, if you have any questions, just email me and. I'll cover I'll cover any questions that you have, um, but anyway, so we're gonna go on to uh, we done covered the the pack theory you know performance attitude and color uh, we're gonna go on to older cocks um, this goes on to the this is why this is tips and tricks uh, older birds have a hard time of breeding uh, when you have I'm going to use my butcher as an example because he's the one that I have a hard time breeding. Uh, he's been shown so many times he has scarred tissue, uh, you know, his feet don't bend all the way. Uh, he's, you know, he needs a little bit of Viagra if you get what I'm saying. You know, he, he's, uh, he don't stand as tall as he used to. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, you have these older birds and they just can't top a hen anymore. Like, you know, they might, top, they might top it, you know, once in a blue moon if he's filling up to it and feeling a little frisky. But when you have a broodcock like that that's top of the line and you don't want another broodcock other than that one, or you don't want to have to go find that blood again, there are ways that you can breed that bird. And I'm going to show you all how to do that in this video. We're going to cut over... Uh, out to the cock house here in a few minutes and I'm going to show you all how to artificially inseminate a hen. Uh, it's very easy, very minimal equipment, and it's it, it'll take a little bit of practice but you'll get the hang of it after you do it a few times. Uh, for those for those of you that are uh, cockers like actual you know fighters and stuff you all probably wouldn't get the whole fact of 
uh, you know, the younger, the younger group, the younger group wouldn't get the whole fact of uh, having a rooster that you want to breed so badly that you actually have to extract the sperm yourself and inseminate the hen. So, pretty much in a in in the whole in a nutshell, we're going to be jacking off a rooster to put the sperm in a hen. Uh, so we're going to go on to, hmm, all right, so there's also ways around doing, you know, artificial insemination. Uh, you have actual aphrodisiacs that increases the sex drive of, of birds. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of older cockers know a lot more than I do about stuff like that. Um, the ones that I've used are just ones that I've kind of figured out in the past at work. Um, you know, when my butcher started having trouble breeding, uh, I started looking into stuff to kind of, you know, put that pet back into step. And uh, I found a few that worked really well, but eventually they kind of ran their course and they don't really work on him anymore. Um, so the first one is calf pellets. Uh, you get a uh, you get some calf pellets, you know, just from co-op or tractor supply or whatever. Uh, you want to get about the 21%, uh, 16, eh, I don't really like 16 too much. But the 21%, you mix in with your daily feed. Uh, it's high in fat, and it's also high in protein. Uh, that fat is actually what drives their ejaculatory glands, and once that, once their glands are actually tensed up, they're going to want to breed. So you're going to want those glands to get tensed up as much as you possibly can before you take those birds and put them in a hen or put them in a pen with a hen. Uh, that way they'll jump right on top of it, get get the job done, and you can put him back in a pen by himself, you know, uh, or you know, leave him in his brood pen, whatever you want to do. Uh, another thing is a uh, pig starter. Pig starter works. It's high in fat, it's high in protein. It's got great nutrition in it. Um, it works, you know, anything with a very high amount of fat or, uh, you know, a, a kind of good amount of protein in it will work, will, will kind of jumpstart their, their system to get them, to get them up and going again. Um, uh, another cheap way to do it, if you're, if you're just wanting to, you know, breed him weekly, you know, once every seven days or something. Um, you can use puppy chow and puppy chow make sure it's wet when you give it to them wet it down a little bit they they gobble it up a lot faster when it's wet uh, when it's dry it'll dry them up and everything and you don't want that especially in a brood cock if a brood cock's dry and everything like that he's not going to want to breed because his body's not, his body's going to be Giving giving moisture back to the areas that he wants the more that the moisture needs to be instead of using it in his sperm. So then you have stretching. Uh, stretch your old roosters. Stretch them; they'll be more apt to move around a little bit more. The more you stretch them, the more limber they're going to get. When you have an old rooster like mine, uh, his he's very stiff. When you pick him up, he's like a board. Uh, you know, you've got to stretch his legs, stretch his wings, you know, lay, lay him flat down, lay those legs back and rub that back, rub his back and his head all the way up, stretch him a little bit. Um, then you have high fats and energy. Um, this was kind of a, a side note of the video. Uh, when you have high fats it's good for your brood roosters. You want your brood roosters to be nice, fat, plump, and happy. Uh, you know, whenever you see a, I'm going to use this. This might not be as a very good example, but I'm going to use it anyway. When you see kings and stuff, like in the old, like in the older days, they're fat. They're extremely bloated, fat, obese, whatever you want to call it, and they're kicking back, eating you know, having sex, doing their thing, and they're completely happy with it. They're living the high life. Uh, if your roosters are in good physical, you know, 
go in shape, that's fine too. You know, I mean, when they're younger, they're going to do that. But when they start to get on the back nine, go ahead and let them put on a little bit of pounds. It'll be easier on them. You know, I mean, they're not, they're not like humans. When, you, when they get bigger, they become harder to move around and everything. When you put a little bit of fat on, when I say a little bit of fat, I'm talking a little bit of fat. I'm not talking, you know, let their guts drag the ground fat. Um, you want to put a little bit of fat on them. It'll help them through the winter when they get older. It'll help them through the winter a little bit. Uh, it'll give them a little bit more energy to burn. Uh, fat, fat is stored energy. Uh, it'll give them energy to burn, so they'll be able, they'll be more apt to breed during the winter, during the winter months and uh, things like that. Uh, my younger cocks right now, uh, they're just now starting to kind of jump on hens and stuff. Uh, it's been cold. There ain't no doubt about that. It's been really cold and they're just now starting to jump on hens. So you just kind of want to feel the fire a little bit, so to speak, and get everything up moving really good and rolling. Um, but the, okay, the high energy. Uh, giving your roosters B12 shots, um, that can be good and it can be bad. Uh, if you give your roosters too much B12, you can actually uh, sterilize them uh, to where you've you've run them. If you've got a if you've got a broodcock and you've been using B12 to get him to breed, uh, it'll work, but it just depends on how much you give them. You don't want to give it weekly. You definitely don't want to give it weekly or every three days. I would say once a month would be would be all right to do that. Uh, You'll burn up their system doing that. Uh, it will give them more energy. They'll be bouncing off the walls. They'll be feeling great and everything, but it'll sterilize them. Uh, just like if you overdose them on any other type of medicines, uh, you know, it can screw up their system pretty bad. Uh, you, I, try, I tend to avoid B12 as much as I possibly can. Uh, you know, on my breeding yard, it's just, it's just completely, it's a no-no so to speak. I don't use B12 to, you know, increase my, my productivity uh, as far as raising or hatching chicks or anything like that. It's, it works, but it's bad for, it's bad for your older roosters. It's bad for your younger roosters. Uh, it, like I said, if you use it, I wouldn't use it. Me personally, I wouldn't use it more than once a month uh, just to, you know, give them a jump. All right, guys. So in this segment of this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, extract semen from your older roosters uh, in order to fertilize your hens. Um, this is very simple to do, uh, just takes a little bit of chicken know-how. Uh, I'm going to walk you all through this, uh, show you exactly where to squeeze uh, and how to work the back end in order to prep the ejaculatory glands in order to uh, milk them. Uh, this guy right here, uh, his nickname is The Tank. Um, he's a stag from last year. Uh, I just used him because I didn't really want to stress out my my butcher cock right now. He's on roost. He's nice comfy. He's curled up next to his hens. I wasn't about to bother him. Uh, but it's the same way with all, all the chickens. So, first off, what we're going to do, uh, you're going to get you're gonna get a plate, or you know, in this case, I'm just using a little lid. Uh, you can also use uh, syringe syringes uh, with the plungers taken out of it, and flip that around, and you can actually measure out how much you got. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna use a little cap, and the area that we're gonna work in. Are you gonna work the camera? <laughs> Do you want me to get motion? Oh, I want right here at the bird. Okay. Uh, the area we're going to work in is right here is his is his leg muscle, and it's going to be about two two inches back from his leg muscle. And right there, as you can see, did you see his leg? When they pull in, that means you're right there on that ejaculatory gland, and you're just going to want to use two fingers right there when you're squeezing it. But what you have to do first 
is you have to prep it. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit here, we're going to, God help me for saying this, we're going to stroke your cock. Uh, you're going to take uh, your two, two lead fingers and your middle finger, your pointer finger, and your thumb, and you're going to put on each side of his back toward his, toward his tail. Uh, and you're just going to sit there and you're going to rub down real slow. And you'll see his legs twitch a couple times. Like that right there, his bottom leg. And then you want to grab the base of the tail and push it up and down a little bit. You'll hear the birds start to breathe a little fast. <laughs> so you want to sit here and do this. I'm sorry to be laughing so much, but I know I'm going to get so many comments on this video. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, this is a breeding strategy, and I do use this. Um, but anyway, so once you get them partly there, you're going to take your lid and you're going to put it right over their butt. And you're going to prep it. And you squeeze it. Oh man. <laughs> it's filled. No problem. We'll do it again. Pretty. We've already we've already prepped him pretty good, so you're gonna sit here and rub on that just a little bit. It's gonna feel kind of like a um um what do you call it? A tendon. Uh, but it's just built up and then you want to kind of push your fingers in there. You don't want to squeeze too hard because if you squeeze too hard you'll bust their nuts. Uh, and you'll know very quickly if you do that because this bird's going to start flopping and squalling and doing all that. Uh, you're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. And I believe we got it all. So you're going to tilt your bird. No, we didn't get too much. We didn't get a whole lot, but just for sake of argument here, you can see all the little white bits and parts in there of, of the nasty. But anyway, you want to make sure this is a lot easier to do when they're when their butts are trimmed. As you can see, you don't like what I'm doing. But uh, this is a lot easier when their butts are trimmed. Uh, these feathers get out of the way and everything. But what you the whole the whole gist of what you want to do here is you're gonna you know just stroke them, get them going, and then once you get them going, you hit that gland. I, I believe he's done. Yeah, I've tapped him out. Uh, once your bird's done this once already, uh, he's pretty. He's gonna be pretty. He's gonna be pretty chill. Uh, just like me or you would be. This bird is shot. <laughs> he don't want to do nothing. He's tired. Uh, so the best thing I can tell you to do is after you do this, stick him in a pen by itself for a little while, let him kind of regain himself a little bit, and anyway, so after we're done with him, you're going to take, you're going to take the sperm that you get. I got, a lit, I got a couple drops in there. Anyway, you're going to take the sperm that you get and... Hell far, I'll just use him again. Why not? Uh, come here, buddy. Don't you run for me. Oh. So, anyway, what you're going to do 
We're going to pretend like he's a hen real quick. You're going to clear the feathers away from the butt, and you're going to take what you have. Uh, you can use a spoon. Spoon's really good to use. Uh, you can use uh, a syringe to actually inject it. But what I do is I'll take it, put it right over the butt, tilt it up, and then rub right below their butt, and that'll make that'll make their butt start fluctuating and it'll actually pull the uh, sperm in. Then after that, all you have to do, take your hand, throw her down, you don't have to do it again for another seven days. Uh, so that ends this part of the segment of the video. I hope that was a little bit insightful. Uh, that's the video and I hope I was informative and I helped you all out a little bit uh, in your breeding endeavors. Um, as always, if you all have any questions, Feel free to email me, text me, give me a call, whatever. Um, just let me know, and I'll do my best that I can to help you. And uh, this has been Wes with Steel Rail Game Foul, and I hope you all have a good one.